Forget about ever having to swap back and forth between the terminal, the browser, and Visual Studio to perform all of your Git-related version control tasks because we have now completely transformed the Git integration experience within Visual Studio. So find out on this episode of VS Toolbox. Hello everyone, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Leslie Richardson, and today I am joined by PMs Pratik Naragoda and Tersir Gurfal. Welcome, y'all. Hello, hello. Hey, hey, Le Leslie, what's up? Uh, not much, enjoying a very hot heat wave going on in Seattle right now and chugging a crap ton of water. <laughs> <laughs> So the two of you are PMs on the version control team for Visual Studio, and I hear we have some new developments in the Git integration space, if you want to tell us more about that. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we have been working hard on updating or revamping the whole Git experience inside of Visual Studio, and uh, we have been doing that for a couple of months now, and so we are super, super excited to talk about what we have so far. Um, a popular question we have been getting is why why do you guys doing this right and so um, it's interesting actually when we uh, started to ask uh, users about what they think about the git experience inside of visual studio a very popular answer was like what git experience right i don't see any so the previous tooling that we had you know was super not discoverable for lots of users um, it is called team explorer and so lots of people didn't really know what that is about yeah uh, yeah and then you know so lots of those who are using it also like we're complaining about the user experience and uh the context switching and so like you know they have to go to the branches page to create a new branch and then go to the changes page to commit the change and then go to the sync page to you know fetch pull or push and so there were all of these different pages that they needed to navigate between and so that was super painful for our users so we decided to take a step back and revamp the whole experience cool i can definitely relate to the whole team explorer thing i remember when i first started working on visual studio i don't think i realized that the team explorer stuff was version control related until a couple months in. So yeah, until before then, I was just kind of sticking to the terminal for all my Git needs. So yeah, totally. And even um, Team Explorer itself was was built on Team Foundation version control, um, Microsoft's other version right. control system. And, and sure, Team Explorer is still going to support that, but we did want to build something that was more Git specific. Awesome. Well, I'd love to see what's new. Yeah, I want to check I, that out. That's Let's actually share my screen to show you some of the, the new stuff here. As you can see here, um, I have Visual Studio open, and uh, this is just a C Sharp, an empty C Sharp new project. It's uh, the Hello World uh, console project, and so I don't have any source control uh, set for this project, so I still see the, the add to source control entry point down there. Uh, but you can also see like the new Git changes tool tool window down there next to Solution Explorer instead of uh, Team Explorer, and so if you open that, you get you know an ability to either clone or create a Git repository. So pretty later on, we'll go over the clone flow. Uh, but for for me now, I would like to show you the create Git repo flow. So you can actually get to that either by clicking on this button here or using the entry point on the status bar there or even using the new uh, top level Git menu over there. So like you can click on create a Git repo and that would open the, the all new uh, create a Git repository experience, which is really cool because yeah. with a single click of a button, you can create a new repo and um, you know push it to GitHub in a single step. That's cool. So is all of this available in Visual Studio by default, or is there a particular version that people are going to need to upgrade to in order to use it? Yeah, so this is uh, actually a pretty plans to go over the specifics of how like users can enable uh, this later on. But in general, this is this is accessible from uh, from all versions of Visual Studio 2019, uh, the the you know the preview version and the 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 publicly available you know uh, stable version as well. So great. Yeah, 
So yeah, in, in this case, like the, the thing I just need to do is just to create and push and that will you know initialize a local Git repo, create a, a new GitHub repo for me and make it a private by default and then push my code to GitHub uh, all in one step. But then I can still use to choose, you know, to create an only local repo in this case if I want. Or if I already have an, uh, an empty remote repo, I can also choose that and provide the URL and that will, will also like push my code to that uh, existing repo. Neat, that's so much better than, I know the option is still there for those who like it, but in the bottom right corner, the add to source control thing that, you know, if you're not looking down there, you can easily miss it <laughs> if you're yep. trying to create the repo, so. Absolutely, yep. Yeah, it's nice to have this in your face um, interface in order to create the repo instead. Absolutely. It's accessible from different locations, so that is super helpful. Yeah, and now handing it over to Pratik, who will go over the clone flow and show you other things. Okay, um, yeah, thanks, Taysir. And so creating a Git, new Git repository is, you know, one way to get started with Git. The other way is to clone an existing repository. So I have Visual Studio 2019 um, launched um, in front of me right now. And um, this is the start window um, where we, you can get to code in different ways. Um, one of the ways here we have is to clone a repository. Um, clicking on that takes me to, you know, a simple um, dialog where you can either enter a repo URL if you already, you know, have grabbed that URL um, by going to the browser, or, you know, someone's given you the URL and then clone it down. But you can also browse um, for your repositories if you're on Azure DevOps or GitHub. Um, that, um, these flows allow you to sign in and just look at your existing repository so that you don't need to um, go to the web and you know find the URL and copy paste it, you can just select a repo here. Um, right now, I, I, I have a um, repo URL with me, so I'm just going to paste it into the um, text field. Uh, this is just a test app, and I'm going to go ahead and clone that down. So what Visual Studio is going to do is it's going to open up. Um, you can see kind of the, the Git changes window that Tacey was talking about, and you can also see a new um, cloning uh, progress dialog. This is going to... Yeah. Um, Oh, yes. I'm just saying that's great. <laughs> it's nice yeah. to see the uh, uh, good feedback like that. Yeah, so the progress was was something that we were missing for, for cloning, and you'd have to like go down to the um, output window or to, to know that something was happening. And specifically, super long clones would, would take some time, and um, the user would not get really that much feedback. And so you we have the dialog to um, to show you that you're cloning, and, and you have the option to continue in background, which will push the dialog to the background. And um, and during that time, you can you can go and do something else while while the clone is taking place. Um, it's great but, since you know the output window is already so polluted sometimes, or sometimes mm -hmm. there's just a lot going on. So it's nice to have that separation. Mm -hmm. Totally. And um, now you can see that my my Git changes window here is is populated. This is one of the new windows that we have for um, on the side experiences while you're coding. So um, the window is always on the side. I can you know select my branch from here, pull. Um, and, push or even fetch um, from this branch. I can also create a new branch. So I'm going to go ahead and, and do that because there's one thing I want to um, make a change to in this repo. So I'm going to create a new branch string change and base it on master and also check out the branch. So I'm um, going to create that branch really quick. Um, and I can also see if, the, if I have any stages, changes or stashes. Um, I have none right now. So um, Right now, it's it's empty, but uh, I'm I'm on the new branch right now that I've just created. So in many ways, it looks very similar to the previous text test explorer window. Just it looks a lot cleaner to me. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah. I noticed like the the push and pull buttons, for instance, those are new, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah so. we. We based it off of that as well as um, the changes tab in Team Explorer, but we we wanted to have a single tool window that kind of gives you all the on the side experiences that you want uh, while you're coding without having to context switch to a different tool or to the command line in order to to do these actions um, um, that are related to Git. Great. Mm -hmm. And um, and so 
now that I've changed my branch, I'm going to go check out the, the files that I've uh, just cloned down. So I'm switching over to Solution Explorer. And in Solution Explorer, you see we have a, a, a new experience here as well. The repo that I've just cloned has um, two different solutions. It's not a it's not a single solution repo that uh, many developers are accustomed to. Some, some use cases have more than one solution in a single repo. And so um, Visual Studio here presented me with the, the folder to open the folder or um, either of the, the solutions that are in this repo. If I have um, a single solution in the repo, then Visual Studio will directly uh, open and load that solution for me. And if I have zero solutions in the repo, then it will just open up the, the folder view of that repository. That's pretty sweet. That seems like a prominent customer ask, right? I'm sure a lot of people were mm -hmm. wondering if that could be a thing in the future. Yeah, um, it was it was definitely um, something that um, we wanted to fix because after cloning a repository, it it we didn't really help you get to your get to the code that you wanted to see. You most of the times you want to kind of get to the solution that you want to open, and so how do we help you find the solutions um, that um, and help you choose the solution that you want to open? And so um, double clicking on a solution in the list will just pop me um, into, into that solution view now. I can always get back to my list of solutions by clicking on um, the switch views button that's up here in the toolbar of Solution Explorer. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just make a quick change over here. So opening up the files, um, I'm going to open up program.cs, and I see that uh, it's a simple command line application. It says, hello, everyone. I'm not super uh, used to seeing hello, everyone. I'm going to change that <laughs> to our uh, hello world. Um, oh, that was so all. unique. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now we've gotten back to that. I'm going to, I can even, um, I want to commit that change now. So um, right here, I'm in my file. I'm going to right click on the, um, the file name, and I have a git uh, option in the context menu, and from there I can directly say I want to commit or stash this. And, and what that's going to do is it's going to pop open my git changes um, window again so that I can see the changes here. I have the, the change that's right here with the plus button. I can stage that change and um, then enter a commit message, um, changed uh, everyone to world, and commit that, uh, commit that change. So that, that commit is now um, ready for me and it's locally available for me. It, I have a success message that tells me that right here. Um, I can also see that I have one outgoing commit. Um, this will this will take me to clicking on this will take me to another flow that Taser will get into. Uh, but for now, I, I have that single change and I just want to push that change um, to my repo. So I have uh, a push button right here. I'm just going to click on that. It's going to give me status saying that I'm going to I'm pushing the branch. Um, the status is also kind of progress is displayed here on the bottom left um, while it's pushing in case pushing takes some time. And I have a notification successfully pushed a uh, string change to origin. And what's really cool is since if I if I'm on a repository that's forked and I want to you know, merge those changes into the upstream, I can also directly create a request um, right from here. This link will take me to the browser um, and um, step me right into the pull request flow. That's new, right? The ability to just jump immediately to the browser from mm -hmm. uh, pull yeah. request? Cool. Uh yeah, and it and it it doesn't uh, matter what remote you're on. Um, it'll take you to the appropriate um, remote GitHub or or anywhere else, and um, straight into the create. That's so convenient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially if you have a ton of repos and you just don't remember where in your giant list yeah. it is on the browser. And so it, it's helping that context switching. Whenever you have to switch between your different tools, you want to make that as easy as possible so you mm -hmm. don't waste time. Okay, sure. Um, Pratik said that you have the intel on everything there is to know about a secret button that has recently been added to the Git window. Can you show us some more of that? Absolutely, yes. So let me actually share my screen one more time here uh, to show you guys what's going on. Yeah, so so Pratik uh, demoed the, the, the new Git changes window, which is the a part of the inner loop, the on the side ex Git experience that users will have all the time, even, even when they are coding. But we realize that there are you know, more to, to the Git experience, right? There are more complicated flows and experiences that users would want to have a full screen experience to, um, to explore with and navigate the repo and you know, do the more complicated uh, tasks. 
So one of the main actually um, 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 customer requests that we got on the first version of the uh, the new Git experience is a um, the the list of incoming and outgoing commits. So and this is where the the link that Pratik showed us earlier comes into play. So I see here uh, I have a one incoming and one outgoing commit. So this is like communicating that there is one incoming commit uh, from from upstream and there is uh, an outgoing commit that I you know some related to the changes that I've been making locally. So if I click on that, uh, I get directed to the full screen repo experience. So this is oh. the brand the brand new you know full screen Git uh, experience. Um, and the new home for you know like the repo browsing and the more complicated Git experiences that you might want to do. Right? That is so exciting to see that you can now look at this map that you normally have to go to the browser for just uh, within BS. Yes, and this has been a super super popular request from our customers, and we are super happy uh, that we you know have this now uh, being a part of Visual Studio. So, People like that, right? Like. Absolutely. You've been getting good feedback on it? Okay, cool, because yeah, so, I think it's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so users have been going to the web or using um, other tools to get this, and now it is a part of their Visual Studio, so absolutely. And so you can look at your incoming and outgoing commits here, uh, but then you can do way more, right? You can look at right. your local history. You can browse your branches. You, you see your local branches and the remote branches as well. So with a single click, I can go and look at the feature too. What does that look like? Uh, another single click takes me to feature one, and I can browse and see how how what's going on there, and I can do a right click and and you know manage my branches my branches right so I can merge I can rebase I can do way more um, uh, and everything is visualized in front of me so that that you know that was a a big jump forward um, for the the new ex uh, the new get experience here. Um, but that being said, we have actually been improving the flow end to end. So let's say, let's assume that you haven't really noticed the one incoming, one outgoing, right? And let's say you are in your code, uh, so making changes, and all of a sudden you want to push your changes that you have been making, right? So let me just uh, click on push here. And I get this new dialogue, right? That is telling me, well, like, looks like there are uh, incoming changes. So, would you like to pull and push, or you know, do something else, right? And yeah. so this is this is a step forward as well. So previously, we really didn't tell the user what's going on. We would just, you know, <laughs> use the output window to show some error messages there. Deal with it, uh, <laughs> yeah. basically. Yeah. So yeah. And so in this in this case, let me uh, choose to pull and push. So this will pull and push. Those are my favorite kind of error messages, the ones that actually give you possible solutions. Yeah, and, so and, so, and in this case, I get into a merge conflict, right? So yeah. I can clearly Everyone's see favorite. that. <laughs> yes, and I can clearly see that the, the Git changes is telling me that there is a merge conflict in progress. But even, even if I'm not here, let's say I'm on Solution Explorer and I may, be, I may have used the top level Git menu to you know, push, I still get you know the that message here on on the editor, right? So I see like file contain merge conflicts in this case, and with a link to open the the, the merge editor. So clicking on that would open the uh, three way merge experience that we have. Uh -huh. So as we can see here, and this is another another experience that we have been enhancing based on customer feedback. So now it's uh, even clearer to uh, distinguish between what's incoming and what's current. Uh, you can also like check uh, one checkbox, and that would allow you to check to to choose oh, wow. current or incoming, right? Um, and that saves some yeah. time. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And so yeah, users used to have to check you know all of the you know the 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 right or the left to do that, and now yeah. it's like. And plus, with the other view, like you know, if you're new to version control, like get like, what's the difference between the head and like the other portion? You know, like racking yeah. your brain trying to figure out whose is whose. Absolutely, yes. So it's now it's easier to distinguish there. We have also been streamlining the toolbar there, so uh, it's way easier uh, to you know read all of these uh, actions and what they are doing. We kind of like group grouped all of the view uh, settings into a single drop down that shows on the right hand side. So these are the um, you know the settings that you might want to change from time to time. Um, and that gives you more real estate for the more important 
things that you want to do while you are on, on this UI. Um, one other thing that we have also included here is the show word diffs, which uh, makes it super easy to like focus on the specific words that have uh, you know been changing in this uh, experience. Um, and I can you know take incoming or or, or uh, take current as well, uh, except merging, and that will you know that will basically accept the choice that I made. Uh, yeah, so this is another another experience that we have been uh, enhancing a lot. That's really cool to see. This seems a lot more intuitive when it comes to dealing with merge conflicts, which I know everyone loves to do just all the time. That's the best part, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, and now uh, let me actually hand it back to Pratik, who is going to tell you more about how to enable all of these new experiences. Yeah, so as promised earlier, we uh, want to show you how to get all of the these cool new Git features and the functionality for version control of Visual Studio. So if you're on the, the preview channel of Visual Studio, you'll get all of these features on by default. Um, you can toggle them on or off by going to Tools, Options, and then Preview Features. Uh, if you scroll down, you'll see the, the new Git user experience. And if you're on Preview of Visual Studio, you'll get this on by default. You can always you know, toggle, it off, toggle it off if you need to, and it'll go back to the, the previous Team Explorer experience. Um, and if you're on Release, um, it's not on by default yet as we continue to build features, iterate on your feedback. Uh, so we haven't turned it on um, by default for Release, but you can definitely still try it out. This checkbox is still there. You can go in, in Tools Options and, and turn it on. Um, it won't have the super latest features that uh, we kind of demoed today, but it will have the Git changes window, the Git repository window, uh, merge conflict de uh, detection. Um, if you're in 16.7 uh, and um, above um, for the release channel. And again, we are iterating on this experience. We want to turn this um, experience on by default um, so that everyone gets to gets to use it. And it is the de facto experience in Visual Studio. So you know, give us feedback, um, suggest a feature, report a problem. Um, we're me, Taysir, our um, engineering team. We're all looking at uh, what you guys are saying, um, what problems you're reporting, what features you you still want in this experience, and we want to address the feedback and um, continue iterating and building this experience out. So let us no. Yeah, based off of all those changes that we've just explored, it seems like you guys really did listen to a lot of the customer feedback. So we hear you, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen out there. <laughs> like, definitely respond to feedback. <laughs> yeah. So, what's next for the Git integration experience in Visual Studio? What can we see in the future? Yeah, so we are, as Pritik said, we are actively working on this new experience, right? So uh, there are things that we uh, are working on today, like including like uh, performance enhancements. So if you try this new experience, you'll you'll notice some of those, and and more of those are coming uh, along the way. Uh, so stay posted. Um, we are also actively looking into uh, the user feedback. So uh, based on the feedback that we'll be seeing, uh, we'll be prioritizing our um, backlog. So we have already an established backlog of uh, lots of the you know, popular customer requests. So, but we want to make sure that we are reevaluating that list once the user gets a chance to look at this new experience. Um, so that is what we have uh, on top of mind. Great. Well, I can't wait to see more. And as is now, I'm excited to be able to just continue using Visual Studio and not have to swap back and forth between like the terminal or the browser and back and forth until I just die of frustration. So <laughs> uh, thanks to the version control team for listening to all that customer feedback and putting it together to create something great. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having us. We're happy. We're happy to do the work. And um, this was this has been really fun. Yeah, happy to have y'all. And remember folks, definitely go try out the new experience. And until then, happy coding.